After waiting what seemed like forever for parts, we managed to pick up all the little odds and ends that we needed to get this thing back together. And it's, you know, random stuff that you don't think about, like the pilot bushing, the throw-up bearing was damaged, so we had to get a new one of those. A lot of odds and ends, nuts and bolts, things like that. But we've already got the flywheel on, torqued down. That's why you see the yellow markings on the bolts to let me know which one that has been torqued down. Next step, we're going to get the uh, competition clutch clutch installed and uh, get transmission hooked up to the engine. So let's get to work. That's a tiny little clutch. Make sure trans side does exactly that, transmission side. All right, well, I was gonna go ahead and put the engine in the car, but I really need to kind of get this wiring laid out. So I'm gonna pull the two-piece intake apart, get the wiring routed underneath it, use some insulated P-clamps, get that all looking nice and pretty, get the intake back on, and then put the engine in the car. Oh, but before I do that, I'm gonna measure the axles one more time, and then I'm gonna go ahead and get the axles ordered. So let's get to work. Alright, hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Honda K-Swap into my 1987 Pontiac Fiero GT. Where are we at? That is a big question and I know we have all been waiting for it, but we've got the engine, clutch, transmission, all back on the cradle. Now we're getting ready to do the wiring. Uh, not, not, well, let me rephrase that. Let me go grab something. All right, when I say we're about to start on the wiring, what I really meant to say was we have to get this mess of wiring because we are going to be using a bulkhead wiring connector to basically terminate the wiring at the firewall. That way, if we ever need to remove the drivetrain, it's one bolt, we disconnect the wiring harness, and then we can drop it out. Whereas on a Fiero, normally you have to go into the, into the interior of the car, remove shift knob, center console, shift plate, uh, in order to access the wiring at the ECU, and then feed all that back through the firewall. I don't want to do that. Uh, on my 88, we actually implemented two, of, actually it took three of these for all the wiring. So uh, 
we're going to do the same on this Honda. So what I want to do is a lot of the links on this aren't, it just doesn't look right. It doesn't, it's not neat. It's not routed the way I would want it. So the benefit of doing it this way is when I cut this harness, I can pull all the wiring to get all the wiring the right length and route it the way I want, and then go ahead and pin this out. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go ahead and get this cut and get started on pulling the links. And then once I got all the links, I'll put, uh, I'll tape it to where I want it, hang the wiring up on my pegboard, and then we're gonna get this installed into the car and then go ahead and get started on the coolant. Let me show you what we're gonna do there. All right, as I stated in many, many episodes ago, we're gonna be using aluminum pipe, all manual bent, to basically do uh, the radiator hoses for the car to tie, <clears throat> excuse me, to tie the Fierro's cooling system into the Honda's engine. And luckily, it's all routed almost exactly the same. It's the uh, lower radiator hose is the one that's the most different but that's why we got the K-Tune swivel water neck to kind of angle it the way we want it to get it over to the passenger side. So we'll get the coolant lines done up, heater hoses, go ahead and measure for the shifter cables, and really just start integrating this into the car. Now we redid the measurements for the axles with the drivetrain out and on the ground. And I'm really glad we did that because these axles have to be the measurements, according to Tad at the dry shaft shop, have to be like dead on. We're talking millimeters of variation here. The driver's side, which is the easier of the two sides to measure, was dead on. I think there's maybe a sixteenth of a difference in one of the three measurements. Uh, it was basically the difference between three-eighths and a half, which was seven-sixteenths. So we got that sorted out. Now the passenger side, we were off as much as I believe it was an eighth of an inch. That's a no-go. So we got all that done. I forwarded that information back to Tad to see if there's any kind of difference in the price on the quote that he did. And then I informed Brian uh, of the situation. And then hopefully, once we get an answer back from Tad, he'll get those axles ordered because there is a four to six uh, week lead time on them. So it's gonna push us really close to the October 1st deadline of this running and driving. Luckily, I've got a lot of work that I can do where I don't actually need the axles. I mean, we've got an exhaust to make, intake, shifter cables, wiring, coolant lines, the wheelwood brakes with the parking brake caliper on the rear, the shifter cables, um, exhaust, the wideband O2, mounting the uh, IQ3 dash to where it reads the fuel, turn signals, parking brake, high beams, check engine light. We've got to get uh, the wideband. We've got to get all that to where it Luckily, the IQ3 has a breakout harness, so we can add all this extra functionality to where it'll display in that dash. That's really cool. We've already got the fuel system done, and I've already got the fittings and the push lock hose, so it's easy just to do my feed and return, mount up the fuel pressure regulator, boom, easy done. So, let's get to work with wiring. Garth, you really need to come visit because I'm going to eat you, man. Like, really, pizza, pizza.
believe so. It can at least see a little bit of the engine. Cool. All right, this whole thing is crooked. I can see that the whole thing is crooked. So let me check your side. My side, it looks like... No, the whole drivetrain is kind of cop. There, well, actually, look. Start going down. I guess so. That's crazy. Excuse me, Mom. Here's the next thing you look. All right. Let's see where we're at. Ready, bud? No, I'm playing the game. All right. Well, I thought we don't play, and let's let's be serious and get this done. Okay. All right. This has got to come forward. The whole trail has got to come forward. So. to the infant, the content hungry peoples because they're dying to understand what you're talking about. All right. I just got the cradle bolts in. The passenger side or the driver's side the rear one's a little wonky. The cradle that's in the car is kind of tore up, but it's an 88 cradle. So I really think I need to use the come along and pull. If you're familiar with 88, you know that rear um, pocket or tower that the bolt goes through into the cradle. Into the, well, yeah, go up. Yeah, the whole car. Anyway, it's, I think it's pushed out a little bit, so I need to kind of pull it back in because the bolt is not lining up quite right, and I don't want to just keep wallowing out the hole. So we've got to figure out how to pull that uh, that rear portion of the cradle in. Yeah. But yeah, let's get back to it. All right. How much up do you have? I have a little, and I am not getting too far. Oh, yeah. That is the cradle and the whole car completely suspended. 
Now I need to go up so I can get jacks in. Get your jacks in, see how I got mine? Be careful because the end of it can come right out. Yeah, there you go. Carry it by the handle. Then sit it under the car, right under the frame wrap. See where I got mine? Yep, now turn it. 90 degrees. Turn it 90 degrees. There you go. Flat. There you go. You're in. Now go let the car down on top of it and we're done. Wait, did I have to make the car my OCD for that? Here, grab these. Cool. That's it. Alright, let the let the car down. Here. Boy. Right at the end of the light, they're over there. Boy. And then I gotta clean this garage up before I do anything else. That's it. Engine in. Hot dog. All right, was that fun? No. No, I didn't. All right, the cradle's back in the car. It's bolted in. Four bolt. I'm holding up three fingers. Four bolts. Then there's you put down. There. Yeah, there. So I do two and you do two? Okay. Okay, so four bolts. That's all in. Now we're going to start with the coolant pipes. We've got the... Uh, dirt I understand together. everything you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, so we've got the Durafix pipes together. We're going to show you how to do it. I've got the tubing expander that I open them up so I can slip them together and then use the Durafix. But I do need to get some more map gas. We need to measure for the shipper cables. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's just a lot of wiring and little piddly stuff at this point, but uh, we're getting close. So thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye! Don't forget to hit this button that looks like this and a big red subscribe button, like this kind of red. Red. Red is good. I'm tired. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> you keep that in. You have to keep that yeah. in.